How to read a head CT in an emergency room. CT of the brain is one of the most common radiological investigations performed in the emergency department. Emergency clinicians rely upon this imaging modality to aid diagnosis and guide management. But, their capacity to accurately interpret CT brain is unclear. This systematic review aims to determine this capacity and identify the potential need for interventions directed towards improving the ability of emergency clinicians in this important area. A few simple principles can be employed to ensure that no neurosurgical emergency is missed, even on a first cursory look at an emergency CT scan at midnight. Symmetry of the brain is the key to radiologic evaluation. The middle of the patient's brain should be in the middle of the patient's head and the two sides of the brain should look alike. There are important functional asymmetries between the right and left hemispheres, the anatomic differences are subtle and play no role in clinical neuroradiology. Only experience teaches how much asymmetry is within the range of normal variation. Any shift of midline structures is presumed to represent a mass lesion on the side from which the midline is displaced. If the interventricular septum and third ventricle are located in the midline, no subfalcine herniation is present. For practical purposes, there are no sucking brain wounds that draw the midline toward themselves. In general, the sulcal pattern should be symmetric. The sulci on one side are the same size as the corresponding sulci on the other. The anterior interhemispheric fissure should be visualized. Loss of sulci may result from compression owing to mass or opacification of CSF following subarachnoid hemorrhage or, less commonly, meningitis or spreading of a CSF-borne tumor. The sulci extend to the inner table of the skull. In older patients, some atrophy is normal. Significant medial displacement of the sulci may represent compression resulting from an extracerebral fluid collection, such as a subdural or epidural hematoma. Because these may be bilateral and similar in density to the brain, care needs to be taken in evaluating the periphery of the brain. Two important CSF spaces within the brain are the quadrigeminal plate cistern and the supracellar cistern. Distortion of these CSF spaces of posterior fossa and base of the brain, even subtle, is an important sign of intracranial mass. The CSF spaces are traversed by important neural structures. Careful attention to these regions is essential. The quadrigeminal plate cistern in the axial plane has the appearance of a symmetric smile. Any asymmetry or abnormality of cistern represent rotation of the brainstem resulting from transtentorial herniation. Effacement of the cistern may be due to cerebellar or brainstem mass. Opacification of the cistern occurs in subarachnoid hemorrhage. The supracellar cistern looks like a pentagon the Jewish star, or the Hindu Shatkona, depending upon the angulation of the scan through it. The five corners of the pentagon are the interhemispheric fissure anteriorly, the sylvian cisterns anterolaterally, and the ambient cisterns posterolaterally. The sixth point of the superimposed Jewish star or Shatkona is in the interpeduncular fossa posteriorly. The cistern has the density of CSF and the structure is symmetric. Significant asymmetry may be a result of uncle herniation. Opacification of the cistern may be the result of subarachnoid hemorrhage or meningitis. The final structure that must be evaluated in a quick review of a brain scan is the ventricular system. It is best to start with the fourth ventricle in the posterior fossa, because it is the hardest to see on CT. Asymmetry or shift of the fourth ventricle may be the only sign of significant intracranial masses. Because of the shape of the fourth ventricle, some asymmetry in appearance may reflect the patient's position in the scanner. The overall size of the ventricular system is assessed next. Enlargement of the lateral ventricles and third ventricle in the setting of headache, on with signs of intracranial mass, may represent hydrocephalus a potentially fatal yet easily treatable condition. Hydrocephalus is distinguished from enlargement of the ventricular system as the result of atrophy by a discrepancy in the degree of ventricular and sulcal enlargement, and by a characteristic pattern of frontal horn and temporal horn enlargement and around appearance of the anterior portion of the third ventricle.
A useful mnemonic which is used to read an emergency head CT scan is, blood can be very bad. B for blood, C for cisterns, B for brain, V for ventricles and B for bone. Thank you.